Well, Catherine, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on this hashtag Thinking Forward series. Obviously, W Series is, is a very new thing, a very fresh thing, and it's, it's been very interesting the way that it's been taken by the motorsport industry and by the wider community as well. And obviously, we'll come on to talk about that. But plenty of people expressed doubts when it first started. Um, but you obviously managed to put it on the map in, in year one. Obviously, you've had to cancel year two due to COVID, and we'll come on to that. But first of all, could you sum up for us what you think's been achieved so far by W Series and how you've managed to change perceptions? Well, I think we had a massive achievement in Hockenheim for our first race last year. You know, what we did was we put 20 women in one grid, you know, on one grid, you know, in one race. And that was extraordinary. No one had ever seen the like in single seaters before. And I think that it was greeted by, you know, a, a, a huge amount of applause and gratitude by a lot of people because people felt as though, it, you know, it was about time that more women were in motorsport. And I think what we have achieved, you know, since then is just we, we have helped raise the profile of, of, of women all across motorsport. You know, it is a subject that, that people are talking about you know, a lot, as, as you would in, in all of your publications that, that you produce too. So I think we've helped change the conversation. I think we've helped raise the profile of female drivers. But there's obviously a lot more work to do. You know, what we need to be able to do is get more women into the higher echelons of motorsport. And, and that's what, you know, we've set out to do. And that's what we hope we will do. So obviously the decision not to go ahead in 2020 was a difficult one, but you're not alone. I mean, Wimbledon did it, many other events did it, but a lot of other race series have gone ahead in compacted forms, quite a lot of them losing money as a consequence, but feeling that they needed to have a 2020 season. Why was cancellation the right thing for you? Uh, I, there were lots of reasons ultimately why it was the right thing. But I think there are two main things. I mean, one, we had drivers literally from all over the world and we wanted to race in a whole variety of different countries. And that just wouldn't happen. You know, you know, we've got people coming over from the States. They wouldn't have been able to come over. How would we be able to, or, or we would have had to have, you know, put all of our drivers up in single hotels for maybe four months at a time. You know, the log just the logistics of getting drivers from 15 different countries into Europe and to keep them there for a long period is just something that that was just impossible to do and probably unfair for the drivers that couldn't actually get here you know we you know how could we have had w series that we say is open for all and we were you know we had a we we could have 10 or 12 drivers but some drivers just by dint of where that they live you know that they they couldn't drive um, and, and the other was just as I've just really alluded to is that, you know what, we are set up fundamentally differently from from all other race series. You know, as, as you know, we are a, a free to enter series and we pay for all of the expenses for all of the drivers. Um, we pay for all of the hotels and we wanted unashamedly to be a global sport. Um, and I think limiting ourselves to maybe one or two European countries meant that one, we couldn't get there and two, it's just not what we were about. And I think that we had such a successful first season. We felt very strongly that we didn't want to have, well, there's, a, there's a rude word that which is half something, but we just didn't want to have a second season that was just less good than the first, you know, and I think what we're looking forward to now next year, we're obviously in talks. No, I'm not going to be able to tell you where we're going to race apart from Austin and Mexico, um, because we haven't, you know, we haven't agreed anything yet, but, you know, we do want next year to be bigger than better. And I think we were too young as a sport to, to go and do something that wasn't very good. You know, Formula One, I think what they've done actually is still really fantastic. Um, but we were too young to do something that wasn't great, I think, because that's what we would be remembered for. Yeah, no, absolutely fair enough. But like, like Formula E, W Series is, is a championship that has a, a sense of purpose baked into it. And we've seen this year, I found it absolutely fascinating how all the social justice and diversity messaging that sports in general 
have really had to become more purpose driven. How do you think that's helped W Series? Well, I think commercially in the conversations that we're having, I think that that's, that has helped us enormously because you know we are mission driven. We're not making platitudes about it. You know, we 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 do as we say is on the tin. You know, we are there to promote women in a sport that historically hasn't had a a huge proportion of people participating being female. So I, I think we have authenticity with brands and um, and. Similarly, we're, we're not announcing anything yet, but we're certainly having good conversations based on the fact that we are truly authentic. You know, we're not putting on T-shirts to, to promote a cause. We are saying that, you know, we, we are what we say we are. We are at the heart of our DNA. We are about the promotion of women in motorsport. And what do you think about the whole notion of, of purpose being at the heart of sport? I mean, even when it veers into the political. That's, that's a, a very long subject and one that I would like to write a PhD on. But, but I think, I mean, for take, take, for example, you know, um, Black Lives Matter. I, I think it is fantastic that the drivers have taken the stance that they have. I think it's great that Lewis has taken the, the stance that he has to use his platform for good. I was more than interested by... Mercedes supporting his position, saying it's it's not a, a question of politics, it's a question of human rights. And we all know in, in the Venn diagrams of what is politics and human rights, there's a there's a big crossover. But I, I think out of all this, what is much more interesting is the way that Mercedes is is supporting Lewis in this. You know, it is not him standing on his own saying this he's he is getting the support of the team uh, and we've seen the change of series you know all over the world in the last few years you know so you know sort of the NFL obviously there's there's been a a significant change in in their response to you know the, the initial Copernics the, you know bending on the knee to now actually apologizing for the stance they've historically taken and saying they support Black Lives Matter enormously. So I think what, what is happening is that you know individual sports people have been using their platform to promote a cause. Um, it is a right and just cause and sort of slowly and maybe behind time, the both the sponsors, the corporates and the, the sporting bodies themselves are catching up with that. One of the um, real positives, the other real positives for the sport, obviously during this period has been the, the rise of esports. Positive on, on many levels, but, but one of them for me really is accessibility. Um, bringing people to the sport, if you like, who wouldn't necessarily have found it otherwise. What's your experience been with esports and, and, and the way it's opened you up to new audiences? Well, it, we, it's opened up to practically a, a brand new audience. I think the the, the trick with esports is is trying not to just get the people who are naturally involved in esports and all they're interested in esports. What we want it to be is a gateway into motorsport and our sport and what it is i mean we all know one of the big problems with motorsport is the expense and this is obviously a a, a gateway entry that is relatively cheap and therefore it potentially opens up our sport to to absolutely everyone because there isn't a a, a boundary of cost um, i think the trick that we've got to be able to to pull out of the hat is to transfer all of those people who are interested in esports is to make them fans of you know w series formula one formula e and and to make those fans as i say transfer well, on the same theme you mentioned it earlier on that you you fund the drives of of your participants very unusual you're not reliant on people who've got rich parents and uh, got sponsors behind them unlike the main single seat pathway which is obviously a lot of the drivers coming up through that ladder do fall into that bracket um that's a great point from the from an accessibility standpoint for, for you but i'm interested in what effect that's had in terms of the type of people that it's attracting the intake of talent it is a meritocracy 
obviously. Um, but what kind of people are you getting as a consequence of that? And how do you see that evolving over the future years? Well, at the moment, I mean, you, you know, the, the drivers that we've had, you know, the, the most notable driver that, that we have in W Series for cost is someone like Alice Powell, who had a her prodigious start to her career. She was the first female to get points, you know, in GP3 back in the day. And, um, and then she couldn't drive and she hadn't, Got, she hadn't raced a race for five years until W Series came on. So I think we're very proud to be able to introduce um, back um, into the sport, you know, um, sportswomen like Alice. But also, I think what we what it indicates to young girls when they're thinking of motorsport being an option for them is that they can look to W Series and and they can see that they don't need their father to win the lottery or their mother to win the lottery or whoever's looking after to do that in order to, to get into the sport. And hopefully we just keep knock, knocking down doors and, and, and you know, that's what we're about. I'm sure you've got many key performance indicators to measure the success and the, and the growth of your sport and, and your business. But clearly one of them is going to be the amount of inquiries you get and the amount of people who are reaching out to you. What has that growth trajectory looked like since, since the beginning of, of season one? It, it, we are approached by you know, drivers and young drivers all the time. I, th I think what's important for W Series going forward, and we're discussing this at the moment, is that we as, as a brand has got to get more involved in grassroots. Now, obviously, we can do that through eSports, but there's, there's a big difference between Formula 3 and eSports. And I think that what we need to be able to do is to support some drivers at, at a younger level um, we haven't come to any conclusions on how we're going to do that, but certainly that that is something that we need to do. So, because what obviously we don't want to do is, is let a prodigious talent fall through the net at a very early stage because she simply can't get the money even to get into a, a Jeanette or Formula Ford type car. Now, W Series is, is, is interesting on a, on a number of, of levels, but one of them, it seems to me, is obviously that the goal is to get women racing at the highest level against men. That's, that's your sort of your mission, if you want, and, and more of them, and a, a successful kind of ladder of talent that, uh, that, that, that becomes the norm, just as it is for, for, for male drivers to get to the highest echelons of the sport. So I guess if you look at it that way, this, is, this series is called Thinking Forward, and Thinking Well Forward, I guess that what that means is you've got like a built-in obsolescence. You, if you do your job right, you won't need the W Series a long time in the future. Is that the right read on it? And, and how do you feel, how far do you feel in the future that is likely to be? Well, my biggest strength and weakness, James, is that I do change my mind. And I, I said right at the outset was that, you know, it, it, if we achieve our aims, we will become obsolete. And now um, we had such a successful first season that if fans and want to support W Series, and it is about the fans, and if, if, if we have a, a huge sort of global interest in W Series, then there's no reason why W Series shouldn't continue because it is a great sport in and of itself. Um, there may be a time where uh, people won't be interested in W Series, as in people wouldn't want to watch women you know, play darts or play snooker, or, um, because the, the final event is truly 50-50 or 70-30, and, and that may be where the fans die off. But... Um, I change isn't going to happen as, as quickly as I hope. So um, I, we're here for, for many, many years to come, I think. I have to put you on the spot, though, and everybody watching, reading and listening to this would, would want me to, and to say, when do you believe, from what you've seen so far, it's conceivable we could have a, a, a woman competing on a regular basis in Formula One? How far off would you, would you think that we are now from that? I mean, I've, I've always refused to answer that question. But Until today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could, I mean, it, it, it'll either happen one, one of two ways, is that, you know, way, 
a driver now, a good quick fast driver now, will get it enough you know, sponsorship and support and money to bulldoze her way in through International Formula 3, F2, and then to get an F1 seat. Or I think what is more likely to happen is that there are some, you know, 10, 12, 13 year olds who are actually starting to, you know, race an awful lot and really getting hundreds of thousands of hours of experience but behind the wheel so that they are driving as much as the, the boys of that same age. And, and that because people want a woman to get back into Formula One so much, is that driver will get a lot of commercial support at an early age. Hopefully they'll come through W Series. But in the end, to go up into international Formula 3 and Formula 2, as you know, it does need a lot of money. But that she, as, as a young girl, will be very successful, shown to be very fast. And then she will get that increasing groundswell, uh, groundswell of support that will, will take her through. So I, if, I, I don't know, but you know, maybe 10 years. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, I don't. I, I think that's the academic answer. I think emotionally, actually, I don't believe it. I think emotionally, it's going to happen more quickly than that. But yeah. that's not. But but I think there are two answers. I think there is one is a visceral answer because actually, I believe that someone is going to support a woman to get there. Uh, but um, from a practical point of view, I think it's a it's it's a it's a ten year haul if that doesn't happen. Because essentially what happens is you get a lot of girls who are very competitive in the karting and beat the boys. I mean, people like Max Verstappen's mum, for example, who beat a lot of people who went on to be Grand Prix winners uh, when she was a kart racer. But then that transition in the late teens from karts into cars and keeping it going, as you said, referenced Alice, Alice Powell, etc. That, that seems to be where the journey ends for, for a lot of them. So overcoming that hurdle would be, would be the goal. So I guess it depends where the most likely, what age right now the most likely candidate is, isn't it? Yeah. As a function of how yes. long it will take, right? Correct. Yes. And I'm sure you've got your radar out and your scouts out looking for them. Yes. Well, I, I think one of the reasons why we want to get involved in in um, supporting younger female drivers is so we can help help spot those. And obviously, the FIA and Ferrari are starting to do that themselves with with their new young drivers initiative. And, and I think that, you know, we should be doing that too. Now, you mentioned earlier on about, about the financial side of things in terms of uh, drivers making their way up to the top, but obviously series obviously need, need backing as well. And clearly looking at the scene now, speaking to uh, you know, bosses of, of racing series and racing teams, it's quite clear that sponsorship for 2021 is going to be a challenging environment as a result of all that's been going on with this pandemic. Are you confident in your sponsor pipeline going forward? Well, um, I am, well, I, I am confident in my sponsor pipeline because of, we have a great sell because of diversity and we you know we have been broadcast all across the world and we've got great audience figures. So I'm very confident on that basis, but I'm, in, I'm, I'm much more confident because um, we are reliant on sponsorship to, to race. So um, we do need in due course to stand up on our own two feet as a profitable business, because obviously our shareholders want, want to see a return on their invest, in, investment in due course. But um, if I was solely relying on sponsorship, I of course would be nervous because of the macro and microeconomic environment that unquestionably the world is going to go through in the, in the next year. Um, but as I say, we, we are going to be racing next year, even if we don't get another sponsor. And, and finally, Catherine, and looking much more broadly, I, I'd like your view um, on what impact you think this pandemic crisis will have on the push that we were already seeing towards electric mobility and, and the decarbonisation of racing and how you and W Series will, will address that in the future? I'm not, I'm not too sure COVID has an impact on the, on the decarbonisation. I think the decarbonisation was, was happening anyway. 
Um, I, I am a, a, a motor racing, old fashioned purist at heart. I mean, I, you know, loved the Formula One cars, you know, pre-hybrid cars, because I love the sound of the engines. I think what we have to be is as businesses, we, we have to be carbon neutral. Um, I think there's so much new technology coming online, you know, in the next few years that I think that the, the efficiency of the engines are such that um, we don't have to, all racing doesn't need to go to be electric for, in order for the, um, the whole series to be carbon neutral. I think there are lots of ways that, that we can achieve that. Uh, but certainly um, W series in the future, I don't think wants to be petrol engines. I think we do need to move least towards hybrid. Um, I, I think that um, electric racing would be fantastic, um, but um, I, I do like the sound. I like my heart being moved <laughs> when, when I go racing. Well, very, very good to, to speak to you. And I look forward very much to the resumption of uh, the W Series, as I'm sure everybody does. And uh, thank you again for, for making the time to speak to us today. Much appreciated. Thanks very much for having me, James.